basically, no, the implicit myth of the film is even the October Revolution can be admitted if it creates a good American couple. Okay. <laughs> so, this is, it may appear not, it, or let's go further. Uh, all catastrophe films. For example, did you see, I really hate it, uh, Armageddon with Bruce Willis and so on. It's really incest. The true story is Bruce Willis has a, have a, has a beautiful, okay, why not, daughter, Liv Tyler, Ben Affleck seduces the daughter. Bruce Willis is furious. And it's clear that the asteroid which threatens the Earth just materializes this paternal incestuous fury. At the end of the film, father accepts Ben Affleck as partner of his daughter, and then he can die, asteroids explodes, the couple is created. It's even the same, with, did you see another Hollywood kick, uh, Deep Impact? It's even worse there. It's a daughter played by, uh, played by Tia Leone. A daughter who learns that her father divorced her mother for a younger woman of her own age. And then this gigantic asteroid and so on and so on is basically the dissatisfaction of the daughter. We have at the end the central love scene <coughs> where when this wave threatens to destroy the United States, her father is of course abandoned by his new wife, he's alone on the shore, the daughter comes to him, you see the gigantic wave appearing, the daughter embraces him, says, oh daddy, they are both dead and so on. I think this scene should be read as a repetition of a classical Hollywood love scene, if you saw that from the early 50s classic, uh, uh, From Here to Eternity. Burt Lancaster, Deborah Kerr, yes, making love in small ways. You know, if you have small, if you have an ordinary adultery, there are small ways. If it's incest, the wave is slightly larger. <laughs> Ruins all of the East Coast. Yeah, yeah, tsunami. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, don't mess with your mother, you will cause a tsunami. <laughs> no, but seriously, but you know what I'm saying? I am not saying simply the film is not really about uh, whatever, uh, war, war, asteroid, and so on. It's just that what accounts for the attraction of the film is that nonetheless it keeps his, you cannot say officially the film is about a big event which threatens all humanity and this is just a detailed love story. But I claim at the deeper level of how you perceive it, it's that the, the true point of all of it is, uh, uh, is creation of the couple, the love story. I don't have time to go through all of it, but let me give you another example. It's, here it's a different love, it's father and son. Uh, Steven Spielberg, I really don't like him. <laughs> almost all his films, uh, mo most of them are the variation, he's the greatest father director that we know, are variations on the motive of father rediscovering, returning to his paternity. That father rediscovering himself as a good father. Even E.T., you will say, what has this to do with e? Ah, take note of a crucial thing. The family of the small boy to whom E.T. Mm -hmm. appears is a single family, father deserted them. And then I think E.T. is basically a matchmaker. He provides the next family. Remember the, the last scene of the film, E.T. goes home. I really hate that creature. I mean, my idea was to squash him with like, <laughs> frog-like, disgusting creature. Uh, okay, then, uh, you remember, look closely. The scientists are dead. There is one scientist who is good. In the final scene, he already has his hands around mother's shoulder. The family is recreated so E.T. can go home. E.T. is just mediating this. Let's go on. Uh, did you see, for example, Schindler's List? Absolutely the same. Uh, Jews are the children. Children, Schindler, that father paternally embraces and take care, rediscovers himself as a good father. Take uh, uh, Jurassic Park. Absolutely the same. At the very beginning of the film, you have a scene where Sam Neill, who is the main character, threatens a child with some dinosaur's uh, uh, teeth, bones, no? And the child is horrified. This is his evil, and then it's, then they escape there, when they are threatened by Dana, then they go up to a tree, during the night he accepts the two children, embraces them, 
typically this bone falls down and the dinosaurs which approach the tree the next morning are herbivorous. They eat all vegetarian. <laughs> vegetarian good and everything. Now let's go even further. Uh, what about uh, the war of the worlds? It's how Tom Cruise, that working class father, rediscovers himself and is accepted as a good father, and so on and so on. It's quite incredible. <coughs> if you read it in this way, you discover, you know, it can be about dinosaurs. It can be like in uh, Empire of the Sun about World War II. It can be about alien invasion, whatever. But uh, the story is the one of the rediscovery of the father. Maybe the clearest example here is, it's not such a big central feeler, but interesting enigma about a group in Bletchley Park, England, trying to crack the German enigma. But the, the central character has also a traumatic love affair with a beautiful, fatal woman. And in this film, they even openly, it's a little bit ridiculous, say the formula when somebody comments to the hero of the film, telling him even the most uh, difficult military enigma the machine to cipher messages can be decoded, can be deciphered. But the true enigma that can never be deciphered is a woman, and so on. No, <laughs> no, the whole film is based on this parallel. We can decipher even the most complex German code, woman, never, and so on. No? So, uh, no wonder, now I come to my, and it's slowly, slowly, slowly ready, to the, you still have two, three minutes, yes, to the ultimate example, for me, no wonder it was, okay, if you, in, uh, if you adjust it to inflation, maybe not, but at least nominally the greatest hit of all times, James Cameron's Titanic. That's an interesting film. No, it's that film, I hate it. I almost <laughs> hate it like Avatar, as you mentioned. No. Uh, uh, why? I claim, again, it's not really a film about the catastrophe of the ship hitting the iceberg. The, the only way to read the film is to connect, to read the accident as an intervention into the love affair between the two of them, Leonardo DiCaprio, uh, uh, Kate Winslet, Jake and Rose, I think. What? Remember the precise moment when the ship hits the ice. It's after the two of them made love down and then they go up and uh, that's when it happens. But it's more complex because if it were to be only this, it would, be, it would have been a simple conservative message of they, uh, although the film is officially liberal, open, they violated the two prohibitions. Uh, they were not married, sexual and class prohibition. She is upper class, he is lower class, so punishment. Uh, it's more complicated. What happens is that when, after making love, they go up onto the deck, she, Rose, tells him, her new lover, listen, I've decided I have enough of my rich society when tomorrow, this is the last night of the ship, when tomorrow we arrive to New York, I will go with you, we will live happily, even if it's poor, I want to live authentically, and so on and so on. At that point, the ship hits the ice. And I think it's a very wise, cynical message. The true catastrophe would have been for the two of them to really be in New York. After one or two weeks, that would have been the true catastrophe. So the message is to save love. You know, the, the, the film wants to sustain the illusion of only if they were to reach New York, they would be happy. They, they had to... <coughs> They had to sink the ship, no? It's the same as to shock my friends in Europe, leftists. You remember, you don't remember, I hope you read about it. The so-called Prague Spring in Czechoslovakia, 68. You know, that liberal communist in power and then Soviet Union brutally intervened. I claim the Soviet Union saved the Prague Spring. Why? In the, no, I'm not Stalinist, not in the sense that they saved.